Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? It's a lovely day in paradise. Sunny day, but very wet. We had some stormy weather overnight. And I'm on my way to work. Well, I've got no patients booked in today. I managed to cram all my patients in the other four and a half days of the week. Because we don't work Friday afternoon either. I never thought I'd be the sort of dentist that didn't work Friday afternoon. I uh, always saw those sort of dentists as um, golfing types, you know, that wanted to have a game of golf at the end of the week. But if you uh, don't have enough patience to keep you working solidly through the week, then it, it makes a lot of sense to sort of bunch them up a bit and then you have to decide which days you're going to bunch them into and Friday afternoon is probably the least uh, useful one so mind you I mean not that I play I've never played golf really I've had think one round in my entire life and uh, I uh, you know I mean I tend to I tend to stay at work and do paperwork, do admin, you know. I mean, the patients must realise that you have to do admin as a dentist. That's the trouble. You know, they want you to be available. I mean, we get all, you know, we're, we're always getting phone calls saying, uh, do you work Saturdays? Uh, can I pick my, what's the latest I can pick up my whitening tray, you know. Um, Do you have a late evening? Can I come after work? All these questions. And, uh, you know, for a large part of my career, the answer was, yeah, we know we work a late Thursday and we work a Saturday morning, so come in. But it's very difficult to work uh, those hours. <clears throat> You're it's not like uh, a sweet shop where you can say to someone, you know, to your wife or someone, can you just sit behind the till? Um, I've got uh, I've got to go up the wholesalers and buy some some stock, and the shop stays open and you just carry on grossing the same. Uh, the shop doesn't really care who's behind the till, providing you know they're a reasonable standard. Uh, whereas with a dentist, if you're not drilling teeth you're not making money um, now there are some notable exceptions to this um, it's not as bad as it used to be on the old piecework it's worse <laughs> on the NHS because on the piecework you used to be able to set your own targets and you were responsible to yourself for whether or not you achieved them um, and under the new system of commissioning where you're given a target, a UDA target by a commissioning body, uh, they're in charge of setting your target and then you have the job of trying to um, make sure that you, you achieve it, you know. And of course, <laughs> on a side note, everything's gone quiet in the labs for March. When I say everything's gone quiet, what I mean is that there's little to no NHS work goes through dental labs in March, but they get a big uptick in the private work. And can you guess why? Have a little think about that. Set that as a little quiz while we're talking about uh, what's the best day to take off. So anyway, um, yeah, you're you're as a dentist, you know, you're. you're you can't earn any money doing paperwork or inspection or testing or compliance. It's only clinical treatment. And you, you're, you know, especially as a single-handed practitioner, which is what I am, uh, you've got this big problem of patients want you to be available. So it's a bit like having a train network and only having one train driver. <laughs> Everybody wants to get a train at a different time. Um, we have a lot of trouble with the hygienists as well because we can't justify having the hygienist there five days a week. She's got about two, three sessions at the most at work a week. And um, 
you know, what, what sessions should they be? Well, we tend to have them on a Tuesday. Well, you can bet your life that for every patient who has a trouble getting in on any day of the week, statistically 20% of them it's going to be the Tuesday that they can't come in. So um, it, that can be a problem. And when you say, well, you know, but you don't, if you need scale and polish, you don't have to come on a Tuesday because we can do a scale and polish any day of the week, that's not a problem. And I would argue that they get better value having it with the dentist doing the scale and polish. Now immediately every hygienist in the country is going to jump down my throat and say, no, oh, you dentists, you're so arrogant, you, you know, and you're useless, you're useless at scaling and polishing. We hygienists, we're specialised in it, we do a much better job than you do, you know, and I'm sure that's right, I'm sure there are some dentists that are crap at, you know, and don't really bother doing the proper scaling and polish. But, you know, I don't, I don't really think that argument holds water. I think not leaving aside the fact that you're getting a practitioner who's got a far greater breadth of knowledge in terms of uh, the treatment of uh, oral conditions in general, not just a very, very narrow uh, and possibly quite deep knowledge about treating gum disease. See, I don't even think that you get that from a hygienist. I think if hygienists were that bloody good, then periodontists wouldn't exist. Do you know what I mean? The hygienists say, no, we're the specialists, but they're not. They're the specialists in bleating about how good they are doing scaling and polishing. That's all they're specialised in. I can do a scale and polish in half the time that a hygienist can and achieve the same health outcome. But the problem is that the patients do not want that. They're not interested in seeing an experienced practitioner and getting a more uh, holistic approach to their periodontal health and having the work completed in the minimum possible time. They want it done in the maximum possible time. <laughs> you know, the, the public still has been encouraged and is still encouraged to treat hygiene as a cosmetic procedure. And, and the those who don't treat it as a cosmetic procedure treat it as the uh, the abnegation of their responsibility in other words that they they don't brush their teeth 363 days of the year properly because they, they come to see the hygienist twice so their teeth are clean for two days and and not uh, you know not plaque free for the other 363 and then you've got a tiny percentage who are interested in uh, they're actually interested in periodontal health, you know, and slowing down gum disease, slowing down gum shrinkage, and therefore prolonging the um, the periodontum and, and the effective life of their teeth. And that's the approach I come at it from. I deal with that it's very small uh, percentage that understands prevention and uh, the clinical approach. Pardon <coughs> me. The hygienists come at it from. Oh, the very very different approach which is that um, same way as women approach getting their hair done you know I'm I got my hair cut yesterday uh, I was very frustrated it took 15 minutes to cut it I had to wait an hour before I got to the front of the queue in the barbers um, because one of the <clears throat> one of the barbers was uh, off for the day they're normally two and there was only one working so I mean, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I, I leave an hour when I go because I, you know, I know. But then I was sitting there thinking, you know, if I, I've never ever kept any of my patients waiting an hour, never. If I keep them waiting ten minutes, there's a there's a there's a fuss. You know, there's we see people very very much on time. <clears throat> okay, now we're not overloaded, you know, and I and I use the word overloaded advisedly. We. Our, our surgery time is underutilized. We could fit more patients in, subject to the limits of my you know, blood pressure and general health, stamina. Um, and when I was a young man, I used to uh, want to have every minute of the surgery time used. You know, We used to hot bunk the surgery to the point where we had a patient having an injection, one downstairs going numb, and, th and then another one waiting to come up. Well, that's great from a business point of view, utilization uh, maximum, 110, 120%, you know. 
uh, the the corollary of that is that you have to have a constant stream of people waiting to come in and that involves waiting literally de you know a delay it means that you have, have to have a buffer your waiting room is a buffer or rather you have to have a room which is for waiting um, I always joke that we don't have a waiting room we have like a reception area but it's not a waiting room because hopefully people never wait the only people that wait there are uh, relatives of people who are being treated and they tend to be waiting there with a cup of complimentary cup of coffee from us or tea or whatever <coughs> so you can it's a compromise isn't it you know you have to strike a balance between what you can do yourself and and you know comfortably without knackering yourself and I've seen because I at one point I did um, surgery inspections for um, an insurance company that provided indemnity and I used to go and see dentists who'd fallen foul of the GDC for some reason or another and it could be anything from drug abuse to um, it could be anything from drug abuse to um, failing to take an x-ray after an endo and you used to look at these guys and there was one one guy in particular who used to work in what was a converted front room of a residential house and uh, as so many dentists do you know he worked downstairs in in the front room and um, had a big window and used to keep the big heavy curtains shut over the window big like big velvet heavy curtains so that no light came in and just had a single uh, overhead uh, strip light and it was like going into a seance when you went into his surgery it was like you know you were going into a seance <laughs> and uh, I said to him why do you work in the dark you know you call this lovely daylight coming in and he said because I work such long hours he said I would rather not know whether it's day or night he literally created for himself a nuclear bunker you know a sort of a, a quasi submarine where there was no evidence like like they do in Las Vegas where they don't want people to know that they've been gambling all night and the Sun's just coming up and it's time to go home because that would stop them gambling so they have the entire all the windows are, are blanked out and the whole place is lit with artificial light so you know, I've seen these guys that are knackered. They they spend their life working on the NHS. They uh, they work very hard. They go grey. They look old. When they're forty, they look sixty. You know. When they're fifty, they look sixty-eight. And by the time they come to retire, when they're sixty or sixty-five, they probably have like two or three years good quality of life left bearing in mind that they've I know they probably put 60 hours a week in since they were 25 and I just didn't want that you know I just don't want that and that's one extreme of the of the scale oh, so I'm working three and a half days a week but we're okay you know we're making uh, we're making a few thousand each month at the moment that's fine and our, our motto you might remember is to do good quality dentistry make money and have fun and we're doing quite well we're doing uh, we're doing better at the good quality dentistry and the having fun bit than we are about the making money bit at the moment but we're okay you know it's quality of life I think is uh, where you're rich isn't it you're rich if you've got a good quality of life so today I'm going in, it's nine o'clock, I'm just strolling into work. I've got my overalls in the back and the toolkit. I've got a third surgery, which I'm taking out, believe it or not. Every other bugger's probably would be wanting to put, if they've got a spare room, they'd be putting the third surgery in, not taking one out. I'm banking on that because I want to sell it, so I'm gonna sell it to some mug who's expanding. And uh, I'm going to turn it into a little lab so that we can improve the quality of our technical work. And I've spent a very happy two days making friends with my 
fully adjustable articulator. Um, it's a it's a Stratos 300, and I've got to say, I've got to say, don't buy one because uh, most of the labs in the UK use dentatus. Dentatus, dentatus. You say dentatus, I say dentatus. Um, and it would be so nice to be able to <clears throat> record a face bow and uh, set it up on, on the fully adjustable articulator and then just send the base plates with the impressions to the lab so that they could then you know carry on from where I'd left off. But we don't have the Stratos, it's not compatible with the Dentatus, so it can't be done. It's really annoying. Uh, so I'm going to have to try and buy a Dentatus, I think, because um, the lab I'm using are really very good, and I'm doing increasingly a, 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 a larger number, by which I mean an extremely small number still, but uh, the direction of my practice is into. Um, Is, is more sort of multiple crown and bridge work, you know? So, the reason why I'm fiddling about with the articulator is because uh, you obviously you take a face bow and it's important to be able to do that really sort of quite quickly and quite professionally. And then you, you transfer that face bow record onto the articulator. And I've bought a transfer jig now the whole purpose of a transfer jig is that you don't want to send your face bow to the lab and they assume that the dentist doesn't have the articulator, they assume that the dentist has the face bow and what they do then is, so you record the face bow and then you send uh, this um, articulated set of articulated joints, you disconnect it from the face bow, send it to the lab and then the lab then puts it in the transfer jig because the lab doesn't need a face bow, they so they put it in the transfer jig, which mimics the you know the, the face bow, and then they then transfer it to the articulator, which is what they've got. So and because I'm lucky, I've got the face bow and the uh, transfer jig, and so just for a laugh, I uh, decided to see whether the articulated cast ended up in the same place <laughs> and by process of elimination I've got to the point where it does but that's only because for this Stratos you can literally you can bolt everything on back to front or and upside down and left to right it's got there's absolutely no attempt to try and design this thing in such a way as it can't be done backwards and literally everything has to be done everything can be done four ways but has to be done one particular way for it to work so I spent the last two days putting this plaster cast on grinding it off putting the plaster cast off grinding it off and just trying and trying and then now you might say well why don't you just read the instructions and the reason for that is that the instructions are in ten languages so the English language instructions are only two or three pages long and they're accompanied by a series of photos illustrating the procedure which are literally and I kid you not one centimetre square so you've got a, a picture of a fully articulated uh, a, a fully adjustable articulator with a face bow on it or a transfer jig and the impression and it's the size of a postage stamp and in black and white and in that sort of dotty printing that is the real cheap photocopier type printing that uh, you know where your eyes supposed to interpolate the dots and try and work out what's going on so anyway we got there in the end and in the end it's good because I've got to the point where it's actually uh, pretty you know I mean it is very accurate when you know how to do it you can get you can say with 100% certainty that uh, you have articulated it correctly because it works both ways but um, I wouldn't recommend Stratos as I say, it's too many ways for it, for it to go wrong, uh, which is probably why they, uh, they settled on Dentatus, the, uh, the, the labs. Anyway, there's so many labs closing down that um, I'll have to go on eBay and see if anyone's selling a, 
an articulator. And also decided on a implant system. I'm gonna go with a Zive, Densply Zive implant system. It was either that or Tri Implant. Tri Implant are aptly named because they are trying very hard to get me to buy their implant system. The the uh, woman who's the sales manager, Dilianka, is on the top of her game, you know. And she keeps asking me if there's anything else she can do to get me to buy her stuff. Which is distressing. But I'm waiting for Densply to put me together a deal, you know. I need a placement kit, prosthetic kit, a motor, some endodontic stops, which apparently are not endodontic, some in implant drill stops, which are optional. As soon as the implant drills are all marked anyway, I don't see why I really need those, but they sort of say, oh yeah, 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 they're worth 140 quid. But we'll chuck them in. So hopefully they'll come back with something today. Yeah, and that's because the guy, Luke, who's the guy for Densply, he says to me, oh, well, you know, uh, have you got a deadline? So you always say no, never say yes, I need it by Friday, because they think, oh, well, this guy's in a rush. We can charge him a premium because he's in a rush. Never say you've got a deadline. Say, no, I don't care. You know, but say, but have you got a problem with supply then? <coughs> and he's like, no, 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 we can get it to you tomorrow, you know. Well, what, what are you asking me if I've got a deadline for then, if it's all next day delivery? But he says, oh, it takes time to get a package put together and approved, you know. Like these, like, onboarding people into on, in, into your uh, implant system, I would say it was so important. It's like once you get someone going on your system, you know, hopefully you've got them for life, haven't you? You know, think of all your sales to any dentist, any surgery that grew into an implant surgery or even just places the occasional. They all started with onboarding that guy. And yet the onboarding is terrible. It's terrible. They're like, you know, I mean, they're keen to take your order, but no more than than the Henry Schein uh, rep is to take an order for Alginate. They're just, uh, you know, they should be giving this stuff away. They should be saying, yeah, yeah, look, you know, we'll give you the motor half price. We'll give you the kit free and we'll sell you 20 implants. And basically, if you, uh, if you don't, you know, if you if you if you carry on ordering implants, then you can pass the other half of the motor sometime down the line. You know, or if you order another twenty, we'll write the other half of the motor off or something. But they don't. Not only do they not have these fantastic deals, which I expect as a new customer, you know, lifetime customer, that's about to be locked into a system, but um, they don't even have one off the shelf. They don't. They can't even say, yeah, we, we've got a newbie's deal. You know, you can have our newbie's deal. They're like, oh no, no, I got a, um, I got to fax somebody in Switzerland to try and, you know, and see if they'll just sign off on this, which puts me off, you know, it puts me off, and the fact that I have to drive over to Maidstone for their study club and sit in an uncomfortable chair for an hour, uh, you know, in in a wet, well, basically a wedding venue and uh, with no proper AV, um, and uh, you know, we'll sit around wedding tables. Um, listening to somebody talk, well, the, something that could have been done on Google Hangouts, you know, that's what it boils down to. Uh, a much, much, uh, much better, you know, and with a better learning outcome. But no, there's no social side, you know, this is what I've always said, you've got to keep the social side and the clinical side separate. If you're going to do clinical, do Google's Hangout. If you want to meet at Leeds Castle for a social organiser thing, then get people together and just say, look, we're going, we're all going to have dinner down Leeds Castle tonight. No shop talk, just social, get to know each other, yeah? But um, anyway, I've gone off on one there. But anyway, I'm going to go and uh, take the surgery out and I might uh, splice a few photos in so and let you see how we get on. All right. Bye.